All right, let's get into the Friday mailbag. You can email info at davidpackman.com. We sometimes will include Facebook posts or messages or YouTube comments or tweets or it's all fair game if you're commenting publicly. But info at davidpackman.com is the place to email. We are starting today indeed with a YouTube comment. It comes from Robert. Robert says, my President Trump, my president who I voted for, who took care of America first, left an economy with a 1.4 percent inflation. Everybody was working then on the first day. Like I told everybody I studied this, I already knew the election was going to be stolen. He's going to shut down the Keystone power plant. Gas is going to go up. He's going to open the border. This country is self-destructive. Everything happened. It's self-engineered. It's all intentional. And you know that. And then there's more. But I would be very, very much oxygen deprived if I continued. Uh, it's going to be hard to talk this guy out of this stuff at Thanksgiving. OK, that that I can say for sure. And uh, this type of stuff is everywhere. It's quite literally everywhere. I don't know what we do with it. I don't know how we deal with it. And we recently spoke to former Scientologist Mike Rinder, who said, oh, no, no, no. Cult beliefs are they are very, very stubborn things. They are very resistant to change, I guess we would say. Uh, good luck to Robert. A uh, Dan wrote in. And uh, again, this one of the things that happens is when we do a live stream, lots of people who have no clue who I am or about our show will be watching, which is great. Thanks to the algorithm, you know, new people. But many of them are shocked that I'm on the left and I don't just shut my mouth the entire show. And Dan wrote in about the Abrams debate. That's D A B A T E, and said, "Packerman, I was trying to hear and understand the viewpoints being espoused tonight, but due to your unnecessary progressive commenting, I decided to change the channel and not even give Abrams a chance." Right. My opinions made it so that you decided that you were supporting Brian Kemp. Mm, incredible amount of power that I have. Dan goes on to say, I think that your viewpoints are poisonous and not indicative of most Americans. Not really accurate, actually. Yes, I am with Trump and garbage like transgender should not be taught in schools. Again, I still what does it mean to teach transgender? I don't know. They're all repeating it. I pray that your children will have a more conservative viewpoint on subjects that are internal to homes and not society as a whole. Uh, no prayer needed. Uh, I think it is quite likely that my children will have beautiful, uh, empathetic, open minded perspectives, not very much aligned with Dan. But thank you. And yes, if you just want the debate only, there are many, many other places where you can find that. Ozan wrote in with tears in his eyes, he says, did Mike Pillow ever send you pillows to try out? I heard they're normal pillows, nothing special. Also, are you going to appear on his insane show? I seem to remember him inviting you on while he was arguing with your Facebook followers. Love the show. Yeah. So no on the pillows. Pillow insisted during the interview. I'm going to send you these pillows. You're going to they're going to be the best thing ever. Uh, and I said, listen, I think you're completely wrong about voter fraud. But if the pillow is a good pillow, I'll tell the audience. And he said his assistant would follow up. His assistant never followed up. No one followed up. There are no pillows on the way. He also did not invite me onto his show. So it may make him as a shock to some of you. He may not always be telling the truth. I'm starting to suspect. Daniel wrote in about Tulsi Gabbard. And this is a this is a good question. Uh, David, at what point do you think Tulsi Gabbard started plotting out her Dem exit, her Democratic exit? I do have to admit I was bamboozled by her, although I didn't vote for her. Of course, you're right. And in hindsight, I see she was and is obviously a grifter. I just wonder if as far back as 2016 or before she had already been planning this, that she had been positioning herself to be a Democrat who would ultimately leave the left because the left left her. After all, that's how the right wing pundits have used her, showing her off as a Democrat who they can depend on to criticize other Democrats, much the way they did with Dave Rubin. Both of them took advantage of that to position themselves for financial gain and notoriety before ultimately becoming full throated right wingers. What do you think, Daniel in San Francisco? I do not think this was something Tulsi planned uh, ahead of time. Tulsi is an opportunist and a grifter. 
Okay. And as such, I mean, guys, think about it. I understand going from, you know, I really think we should have super high taxes on the rich to saying, actually, uh, I think 37 as a top tax rate is fine. Uh, once you make above 400 K, even if you make a billion bucks, like I can understand that. I don't agree with it, but I can understand that. But Tulsi went from being a Democrat you know, uh, by name anyway, in the Democratic primary to over the weekend, she was at a, a rally to end child mutilation. And of course, your guess is as good as mine. What that means. Th does that relate to vaccines? Does that relate to gender affirming care for trans people? I don't I don't know what child mutilation they're referring to, but it's a whacked out event. It's just opportunism. It's where who's interested in me? Democrats were not interested in Tulsi. She got what? One, two percent of support in 2020 in the primary. And just nobody cared because it was also boring. Same thing with Trump, right? I mean, listen, if Trump did his shtick and said, I'm running in the Democratic primary, ha ha, maybe he makes one debate and then he's gone. Trump's not winning a Democratic primary. It's the wrong audience for him. He needs people willing to, you know, so he ran as a Republican. Similarly, uh, the stuff Tulsi's doing works way, way better on the right and she's going full in. So, no, I think she did not plan this far ahead. It was just when she ran in Hawaii, the way to become a member of Congress was run as a Democrat. And I think Tulsi, if anything, probably has very flexible political views or none at all. And it's just all a grift. Bill wrote in and says, David, I have a question. Can Trump run in 2024? That is the 22nd Amendment says no one can be president who's been elected twice. Trump won in 2016 and he claims he won 2020. Therefore, the fact he refuses to concede the 2020 election means he cannot run in 2024. Bill, of course, you're making sense. But no, this isn't going to work because they've already figured it out this way. And I'll tell you, it is they are right about this. Even if you believe that the will of the people was for Trump to win, the states transmitted their electoral votes such that Biden got 270 and Biden is the president. So certainly Trump can still serve. And, and I know that I get the idea, right? Trump says I ran twice. I won twice. Well, if you won twice, you can't run again. You can't serve more than two terms as president. And Trump has only served one term. So I wouldn't I wouldn't focus on that too, too much. Kevin wrote in and says, hey, uh, David, first off, I watched your recent video showing the absolute insanity of these right wing political hopefuls. How these people have gotten this far is beyond me. Second, do you think these people pronounce Kamala Harris's name as Kamala instead of Kamala because it sounds more brown for lack of a better clarifying term? It seems to me they have a vested interest in making their opponents seem more other, regardless if they turn around and spit out melting pot disingenuity right after. Uh, thanks for your show, David. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not saying Republicans in their heads go, hey, you know what? If I say Kamala instead of Kamala, it sounds more black, so I'm going to do it. I'm not even necessarily saying Republicans think to themselves, I'm going to disrespect Kamala Harris by mispronouncing her complicated, non white sounding name. I think it may even be operating at a subconscious level, but there is no doubt that part of the reason they can't just say Kamala or won't say Kamala is because Kamala Harris is a non white woman. Subconsciously, overtly, we could argue, I don't know, but there is no doubt that that is a factor. Mayank wrote in about the Gish Gallup and says, David, sir, you spoke about how to combat the Mike Lindell style Gish Gallup debate strategy, which was super interesting. It made me wonder if you have any tips on how to learn to deploy that strategy in a debate yourself. I also wonder what happens if both parties use that strategy incoherence, I assume. Yeah. So as a reminder, Gish Gallup is when you, you say 10, 12 different things in a debate. Uh, it's impossible to follow all of them. It's just like throwing a bunch of crap at the wall. Right. So, you know, during these uh, 2022 debates, we've seen the topic of I don't even know the southern border come up. Right. And a Republican will go. Uh, Joe Biden has opened the southern border and is letting people pour in to these Democrat sanctuary cities. The border was fixed under Trump. The wall was built. 
and we had the strongest border ever. And they're bringing in fentanyl. Actually, they like to say fentanyl, fentanyl. The fentanyl is coming in from China and it's coming through the southern border. And now it's in Halloween candy and blah, 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 right. And. If it's not, oh, you get 30 seconds to rebut that, right? If you get 30 seconds to, to rebut that the way many of these debates are structured, you can't do it. The debates are mostly structured in a way where you can't fight the gish gallop. The best way to have a fighting chance when you have 30 seconds to rebut all of that stuff is to say, listen, there were so many lies there. I can't rebut them all in 30 seconds. If you give me more time, I will. But the wall wasn't built. There is no open border. The fentanyl is right. And you just go boom, 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 boom. He, he or she is lying to you. That's your best shot in a 30 second response format. In a more extended conversation at Thanksgiving or whatever, what I like to do is say, listen, you just mentioned 12 different things. We can't talk about 12 different things at once. We just we just can't. Are you willing to to talk about these things one at a time so we can actually figure out what's going on? Because I want to know what's really going on. And if you can get the other person to commit to that, um, then you have a fighting chance. But in the debate format, it's impossible because you can't do it in 30 seconds. Uh, Malcolm wrote in and said, this is why Democrats lose. Hey, David, I watched your excellent stream of the Georgia Senate debate. There was a difference of expectations. Warnock proving he should continue as U.S. Senator Walker proving he could express coherent thought in the English language. I waited for Warnock to deliver the killing blow. He let Walker express pro-life sentiments without bringing up the abortions he has paid for and let him take a stand on many issues he doesn't understand or has no answer to from crime to health care to education. Why do you think mainstream Democrats can't fight Republicans on their own level? I don't want them to dismantle democracy or perpetuate lies, but I do want them to fight Republicans on their own ground by fighting hard. Can we fix this? I was also disappointed. So on the abortion thing, I think Warnock just said he considers Walker's personal life and the abortion stuff out of bounds. So I think what Warnock decided not to talk about that. But there were many opportunities for Warnock to say, ladies and gentlemen, my opponent has no idea what he's talking about. He just said about 100 words. There is no meaning to what he is talking about. Here's the truth about ABC. If he can't even explain to you that he understands this, how can we empower him to be one of 100 U.S. senators? It is dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. The Republicans have done something dangerous and uh, irresponsible here. He didn't he didn't go that way. I don't know why. And maybe his thought is it would come off poorly. I, I don't know why. But I was not thrilled with that performance or many others. Mark Kelly's performance wasn't good. Uh, It's depressing. And I'm sure there's an explanation as to why. I'd like to hear it and evaluate it for myself. We've got a great bonus show coming up for you today. Sign up at joinpacman.com. Don't miss it.